clarity of thought and mental autonomy is more important than ever. But there are those who would shout at you and punish you if you express a view that they disagree with. People may manipulate your emotions, thoughts, and possibly even your body and wallet if you were abused or neglected as a youngster. Disorientation in social circumstances, especially when engaging with people who have strong opinions and personalities, is a common symptom of childhood PTSD. Having firm beliefs is normal and acceptable. Still, we manage to circumvent that, and we frequently feel pressured to agree with those thoughts, to remain silent when we disagree, or to forget our own beliefs when we are in the company of those of others. Therefore, you are aware that this problem can also occur in the context of a family. With people you already know, co-workers, classmates, neighbours, people you've never met, online acquaintances, or even total strangers, by marrying them. You can't generalise about people's thoughts and feelings. However, an alarming rise in the number of opinion bullies, people who act aggressively toward those who disagree with them, has been seen. In addition, let's assume we define narcissists as those who are sure that they are correct and that everyone else is in the wrong. An inflated sense of self-importance is required to not only enlighten you of one's position, but also demand that you share it. Everyone here agrees that this is a nightmare. This is the stuff of nightmares for adults who suffered traumatic events as kids. It feels quite dangerous right now. Many victims of this bullying trend don't know how to respond and have gone into hiding out of fear for their safety, even individuals who have never been through anything really resembling a traumatic experience. For trauma survivors, the consequences of this can be catastrophic. The complete isolation it can cause is unhealthy. When confronted with someone who is aggressive and authoritative, it can be challenging to maintain your own beliefs or agenda, and you may find yourself plunging deep into a CPT survival reaction. I mean, are you serious? Just make it through this hard patch. If you agree without saying so, just smile and nod. Don't fight back, just take the abuse and go on. But in that heightened pressure, you might be tempted to go along with their harmful actions, like slandering other people behind their back and online, without the least idea whether this trash talk is even true, and you end up hurting other people and hurting yourself, and it feels horrible, or it should. The inability to express yourself openly is not a valid reason that you're suffering from a phobia. It's different. You're not wrong to think there are real consequences to saying what's on your mind, because that's what happens when you're dealing with a narcissist. So, let's acknowledge the risks and recognise that it takes courage to be genuine and not cave to the pressure of their opinions. In the present atmosphere of bullying, narcissists seek to control you so that they can take your resources and use them for themselves. To help you resist the urge to abandon your unique identity, we offer five suggestions. If you're attempting to blend in, you don't have to defend yourself against others who have different opinions. You can still take some time to be quiet. If you do choose to proceed, it is critical that you do it in a way that is true to who you are rather than sacrificing your true self for the sake of fitting in. I have had this experience before. Having the strength to be yourself even when doing so makes you feel uncomfortable is an invaluable trait. This is what I mean. You're learning as a trauma survivor to stick with yourself and not run away from people who are more forceful, furious or loud. In fact, you shouldn't check out if you happen to be near this type of person. This is a major misuse factor. You stop trying, you admit defeat, you form attachments to other people and you start to trust what they say over your own observations. Even if the bullying stops short of physical violence, it's never enjoyable to have to deal with a bully. What I'm about to teach you will help you deal with interactions with such people without becoming angry, staying silent, or putting on an act. 
This person I just described does not represent you. My wounds needed time to heal before I could admit that I was susceptible to the opinion bullying of others. Since I thought, rightly or wrongly, that I needed them, it may have been a contributing factor in my falling for them. I was desperate for cash, and they happened to be my boss. Is there anyone you've worked with who fits that description? Feelings of dread and profound embarrassment overwhelmed me whenever I was in their presence, and I often found myself unable to talk or move. People need to have power in you in order to make you willingly accept a notion that makes you uneasy. You may feel this way for one of three reasons. Either it's your only source of income or companionship, you're in danger otherwise, or it's both. We're all aware that there were times and places when standing out of the norm could lead to one's death. There's also a more subtle kind when it's implied that you'll be dismissed from your job or otherwise socially destroyed. I know many of you are thinking about the political drama of the last few years, so I'm going to ask you right now not to reference any specific people or ideas if you remark. We can discuss this without disclosing our opinions on the matter. Each individual must learn to stand firm when others attempt to silence them because of their viewpoints. People from all walks of life come here to find solace, and that's something I find really encouraging and correct. Maybe if we can learn to appreciate and even celebrate our diversity, we may repair the damage done to society by the current political atmosphere peace. This is what I want all narcissists to realise, although I doubt if it's feasible. Always assume there are others in the room with opposing perspectives. Disagreeing individuals might not feel safe voicing their thoughts in your presence. That said, it would be safe to presume that everyone has their own opinion, even though this is rarely the case. How I discovered the answer after fighting for it for years in a word, I didn't like it. That's just not my cup of tea. My anxiety used to the point where I'd get sick, but I can tell you that while I have been damaged by bullies who want to take my power away, I have also hurt myself by giving in to fear and doing so earlier. In addition, I harboured some insecurities and lacked the confidence to strike out on my own and express myself. Or, I can already guess their possible actions if I ever try to stand out so I didn't feel comfortable voicing my opinion publicly. I didn't like feeling like I couldn't be myself around them, that I couldn't be open and honest or say what was on my mind without worrying about what they'd think. The further I go away from my traumatic experience, the less I can bear being a self-hating, emotionally closed-off chameleon. Note the ethical discomfort you feel when you give in to opinion bullies and stop speaking out for yourself. It's an absolutely repulsive feeling. In other words, you need to abandon your adult mentality and adopt a more childlike approach. Just as dangerous as poison, it appears. It's made me question how far I've come since I first started doing this. It was, in all honesty, a really systematic process. It's still a work in progress, but I'm becoming better at maintaining my authenticity while maintaining this perspective. Bullying began as I was making progress in recovering from CP-related PTSD. There's no way this coincidental. Recovery breaks all pretense, and I know that. Are you getting what I'm saying? Healing eliminates the need for false fronts. So, the next logical question is, what can you do? You can increase your strength if you work at it. Within the safe confines of one's own identity, one can explore new ideas and maintain an open mind. Like physical strength, this is something that can be trained to improve. How? Through exercise and practice. Childhood trauma prevented us, but we may start over now. Here are five strategies to strengthen your resolve and stay true to yourself and your convictions, even when you are surrounded by people who would pressure you into abandoning them. The first step is to be truthful, even if you can't always say it directly to people's faces. 
It's something you say to yourself and something you say to a trustworthy friend who makes you feel welcome, but the timing and location aren't always right. Get it down on paper and say it out loud. Form the practice of putting into words what you already know and believe to be true. Find a private space, like a car or a restroom, and tell them discreetly what you know to be true. Start sharing your true feelings with the world by putting them down on paper and reading them aloud. Learning to accept and love yourself as you are is a vital part of the recovery process. As a second tactic for standing up to narcissists, training your attention skills is essential. It's natural to feel disoriented while reliving traumatic events from childhood, but those with impaired cognitive functioning often unintentionally put themselves in sticky situations. We have the ability to recognize the warning signs, but we choose not to. We don't sense that anything is amiss, therefore you may feel dominated even though no one is trying to exert such influence. Ensnared by someone whose agenda takes precedence over your own, mastering the art of being in the moment takes a lifetime, but you may begin practicing it right now. What really needs to be asked is, why are you doing this? Third, enhancing your social abilities with people who matter to you. You are more vulnerable to damage and less able to judge the actual intentions of others when you are emotionally distant and alone. Therefore, it follows that when we partake in CPT, we almost always experience damage to our potential to connect with others in a true reciprocal relationship. This leaves us feeling lonely and makes us more susceptible to coercion from those in positions of power. However, individuals with connections can spot red flags and take preventative measures. It's not unusual for people to break up with controlling or abusive spouses. Okay, number four, a strong belief in your own sense of freedom and agency. Most of us lack it right after we've experienced trauma. We can feel as though life is just happening to us at times. All of our options have been exhausted and we can do nothing. But most of the time, we can shape our own destinies. We can choose among several possibilities. Fear is usually the main factor that stops us from taking the initiative. The fear that nobody will stick around unless we give in to their demands. In addition, while we are paralyzed with fear, our abusers can easily take advantage of us. And last but not least, point number five, form the routine of making your own schedule every day. Having a life and envisioning ways in which you might enrich and expand that life is crucial elements. The power of bullies is diminished when the following five procedures are implemented. To my dismay, I realized then how dependent I was on other people. When I was a kid, I wasn't ruled by bullies, but by my own assumptions about what other people wanted. Overcoming CPPTSD requires a person to heal and mature to the point where they no longer need other people to determine who they are, control. You may forget everything you ever learned about the world if you let other people shape your opinion. All the problems in the world can be traced back to us, and if you believe that the only ones who can fix them are outsiders, you're greatly mistaken. However, you have the floor now, and it's your call. You have the freedom to explore your interests and develop as a person. While this may not happen instantaneously, it is possible to make steady progress every day. That feeling is great too. In case you need a visual reminder of how great it is to be made whole again, you may watch my other videos. I look forward to catching up with you soon. Have a nice day.